know when you're going to meet that person who's going to change your life. I got an assignment, so I came up. I hadn't met him before. I had spoken to him on the phone. So I met him, and I just had come up to write my story and sort of sit there, because I'm really scared of horses, actually. So I wasn't eager to do the horse thing at all. But when I saw the first woman at our clinic went and did her thing with her horse, I just was so moved that this woman could have a connection with a horse like that. And um, so I, w I said to Stan, oh my God, I want to, I want to, I want to do this. And he said, fine, pick a horse. Kind of reading them, what I, what I call it, a lot of it's like a feeling. And sometimes, you know, just like our, um, our language, some of the words that we use you know, you can't interpret them in English. At first, you know, I just really hollered as loud as I could out there at the hospital. And I asked the Creator, you know, I want my son back, no matter how he is, I want him back. Stanford had suffered more than anyone I had ever met. He'd endured physical pain I could only imagine. He'd gotten hurt, then suicidal, but now he was kind and wise because all his misfortune had pried him away from serving his own ego above all else. He showed me the rock bottom truth so often obscured from the white middle class. Life doesn't do a damn thing you think it will do. So I think he's got a real trustworthiness and, and um, I think he connects incredibly well with people, and incredibly well with horses, obviously. For me, the horses were just the beginning. The effect he has on people was even more amazing. This man who'd been in a wheelchair for over 20 years had more abilities than anyone I'd ever met. For four or five years, I was at his place a lot. It changed my life. Oh, no, 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 no. 